let's start our exploration of articulatory phonetics. We'll start with the consonants, and in particular, with the place of articulation, which is where your tongue or your lips go when you're producing sounds. So this is the International Phonetic Alphabet, and as you can see, it has descriptions that match sort of parts of your mouth, like bilabial probably means two lips, dental means teeth, alveolar means something that we'll look at in a moment, and so forth. So let's look at your different articulators, which are the parts of your mouth that move when you produce sound. So for example, you have lips. Your lips move when you pronounce English sounds like the B in baby. And by the way, please try to pronounce them as, as we go so that you can feel what your mouth is doing. This is incredibly important in this part. Baby, baby, man, man, spy, spy. As you can see, your two lips are making contact with one another and then releasing. So these sounds are bilabial because there's two lips involved in that action. There's sounds in English that are labial dental. For example, the F in fall. They're labial dental because they involve your lower teeth having contact with your upper lip. Fall, <laughs> very fall. Please give it a try and try to feel what your teeth and your lips are doing. Fall, very. There's sounds that are dental or interdental because your tongue and your teeth are involved. For example, in thought, your tongue is jammed in between your teeth and then uh, producing a stream of air. Thought. We also have breathe in English. Thought, breathe. So those are your lips and your teeth. And then let's say you have your teeth here. Place your tongue against the back of your teeth and then start going up. And then you'll notice like a little bump right above your teeth. We call this bump the alveolar ridge. It's sort of like where your teeth go into your gums. That ridge is a very important uh, point of articulation for English. There's many English sounds that are produced with when the tip of your tongue has contact with the alveolar ridge such as the T in top, the D in dad. Please try to make the sound so that you can feel where your tongue is going. Dad, sad, zebra, nope, nope, light, and so forth. We'll ignore red for a moment, and we'll go straight to this one, should. So this if you try to produce the sounds in should and Asia, these sounds are produced with your tongue slightly further back, like above your alveolar ridge. Should, Asia. It goes around here. That's why we call them post alveolar. If you slide your tongue, try to slide your tongue from your teeth to your alveolar ridge and then further back, you bump into a part that's like hard. It's your palate or your hard palate. There's English sounds there, for example, yes, yes. That sound is produced when the body of your tongue touches the hard palate, yes. If you keep sliding your tongue backwards, you'll, you'll go into a part of your mouth over here that's kind of like squishy and softer. We call that the soft palate or the velum. There's sounds of English that are produced there. Uh, when the body of your tongue makes contact with the uh, velar region. For example, cat, cat, go, or sing. Please try to make the sounds. Sing, and notice what your tongue is doing. There's a part here that's not used in English, but is used in languages like Arabic, the pharynx. Ha. And over here, there's the glottis, where the vocal cords go. There's English sounds there, for example, the H in happy, happy, there's friction here. And the closure of your vocal cords, that is called the glottal stop, is what, go, what uh, goes in between oh, 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 
try to place your hand against your throat and then say, oh, 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 oh. And you'll notice like a little motion here. That's the glottal region. So your tongue and your teeth and are all articulators. And whenever there's contact in between articulators and a sound is produced, we call that a place of articulation. And the International Phonetic Alphabet is arranged by place of articulation, two lips by labial, uh, teeth and lip, labiodental. Here is what we called interdental before, um, but this one, this table calls it dental because there's sounds there for Spanish, for example, that are here as well. You can call it interdental or dental, but it, uh, the sound F here, as long as you know that there's a motion that implies both the teeth and your tongue. There's alveolar sounds like t, d in English, uh, tooth and dad and nope and uh, sad. This glyph here, the upside down R, is the R in English, like in red, red. It's called approximate, and we'll look in, uh, at that later, because it uh, the tongue does not touch the alveolar region. It merely goes near it. It approximates it. Red. Red. Please give it a try. Red. So this is the R in English. The L in English is also alveolar. We'll look at all of those places of articulation, but let's focus on the English ones for a bit. We have bilabial sounds like spy and baby and man or mom. Uh, we have labiodental sounds like the ones in fall or vet. We have interdental or dental sounds like in thought or breathe. We have alveolar sounds like in tooth or sad or red. And we have post alveolar sounds like in should. Pop. Fall. Thought, tooth, should, and so forth. Please try to pronounce them and feel what your tongue is doing. We're going to do something called transcription, which is where, we'll, where we will try to write what English words sound like. We're going to use the International Phonetic Alphabet for that. And by the way, a phonetic transcription is enclosed in square brackets. These are examples of the English words pad and bad. So this is the vowel that's in the middle of those words, pad and bad. I want you to try to use this vowel in the middle of these words and figure out which is the big, uh, the consonant that goes first and the consonant that goes after the vowel. So there's some consonant in the IPA table, this vowel, a. Eh, and then some consonant in the IPA table that goes after the vowel. So there should be three things for mass and for bath. Give it a try. What's the IPA transcription of the words mass and bath? Each of them have three characters and the square brackets. Please give it a try. There's the M, the M, ma, and then the S mass, mass. For bath, there's the b, bilabial b, the e, and then this theta here, bath, bath. So these are IPA transcriptions of these English words. Give it a try with these ones. What is the IPA transcription for these words? And again, each transcription should have three letters, three IPA characters. Give it a try. The transcriptions are rad with this approximate R and dash with an esh, a postal velar esh. Rad dash. In summary, we use the IPA to describe to transcribe the words from a language in a way that represents how the sounds are produced. And we looked at the place of articulation, which can be bilabial, labiodental, and so forth. We're going to study these, but in the next video, we'll look at even more places of articulation.